Sednam offering a general reading and as always explore what resonates within you. Your awareness to your own experience is by far your greatest teacher. So if I take a message one way or a card one way and you see it another, roll with that over what I say. I'm getting two things. Um, the crone stones were calling out, so we'll take a look at those and I, I do apologize, I'll have to use the book because I don't know them that well um, to be able to pull a stone and, and and tell you the meaning there. I also got, I was, I was kind of surprised with this, is know your escape routes. And initially with this, what I, what I thought was, you know, what, what are you doing to stay in your comfort zone um, or escape an experience? Um, whether that is to deflect, reject, cast blame, or perhaps it's about an addictive, codependent pattern, something like that that kind of keeps you um, boxed in in a particular way. But as I sat with it, um, I got this feeling through my solar plexus, but it wasn't like an alignment solar plexus. It was more like work your, your core. Um, and so where I'm taking this is that like that eight of swords energy as in feeling trapped and flipping that to personal empowerment, that you have the strength, that you need to work your power, you need to work your powerhouse, um, your solar plexus, whether that is how you're eating or um, doing like Pilates or uh, Nabi Kriya and Kundalini Yoga, whatever it is for you to start exercising your personal empowerment. Um, so noticing how you have the opportunity to radiate, you have the opportunity to step forward, you have the opportunity to navigate your own experience and work with your destined trajectory um, or remain cocooned or remain stagnant in your comfort zone. Uh, and you have that opportunity. You can stay there if you want. You can stay there as long as you want cocooned. <laughs> um, cocooned in your room, that, I think that's part of the lyrics, or you can allow yourself to open up and that takes time. It takes time for the wings to dry. It takes time for you to learn how to fly, but there's something deeper within you that knows that that's possible. So exercising your personal empowerment. And I think I've told you this before that when uh, there have been times that I was afraid, I use a mantra, empower fucking mint, because I throw the F-bomb in there and it just makes you want to giggle. If I do so, if I throw in some words that make me laugh, it makes it a lot easier to not feel the shame and heaviness of it, but totally changes the situation. So Crone, I Googled Crone and I just took surface level. I took three, three uh, definitions. So an old, ugly woman, thank you Oxford, Univers uh, Oxford Press, crone, a cruel or ugly woman, thank you, Webster. And Wikipedia, words disagreeable, malicious, sinister, and get this, magical. So perhaps, <laughs> perhaps what makes you wonderful is actually pushing the comfort zones of others that then creates this interesting dynamic. And I also think when you look at the crone, we could take this in so many diff different directions. And so you might have more wisdom with uh, the energy of the crone than I do. So uh, this is merely a snippet. Um, but looking at life cycles, for example, but I also think looking at what we believe is beautiful, and it's not so much about what's beautiful and what's not, but that it is relative. It is re relative to societal standards and across time in different cultures and points of history, um, different body shapes are be more beautiful than others, for example. And I feel like right now marketing is what sways what we define as beautiful and how we choose um, to define ourselves and can you like break that mold of what someone else defines as what you should be or could be and really just open up to how fucking magical you are. So let's begin with crone stones and just see. I don't have them flipped up yet. Uh, so, 
Just notice what you what comes to mind when you look at this. And the word uh, with this is sustainment. So what can you sustain? And are you going out of your way uh, to people please, for example? I know that all too well. Um, or over give, overdo. Are you burning? burning yourself out trying to reach some end goal or possibility and there, there's little fruits here in the sense of like it can open up I, I believe that's a cycle of the moon the full moon Let's see here thank you for your patience these are a gift um, she gave me these stones and actually my first, my first deck, so we'll use both of those. All right, is that the same one? Okay, I didn't realize that was the same one. <laughs> I said full moon and it's right here. Um, all right, in the Hawaiian myth, uh, the prominent vegetarian goddess reminds us to harness the full moon energy before the opportunity passes us by. So what doors are open for you? She gave birth to many children, and for this, she was called Mother of Hawaii, and her children bore children. Many women died, for until the woman, then women gave birth by having their abdomens cut open. She taught women how to give birth between their legs, teaching us how to unfold the wisdom of the moon's energies. She offers hope and comfort to the very frightening and potentially life-threatening reality of childbirth. Not to mention raising questions about cesarean procedures in ancient Polynesian practices. On another level, her story gives insight for understanding the moon's most potential energy. The height of the moon's waxing each month, like a woman at the end of pregnancy, is the time to act. The time to act. If you pull the stone in a reading, be prepared to act on energy provided by the full moon or sign. So be open to signs and what's coming and what doors are opening, which indicates to you whatever is growing to fruition will reach a climax. The waiting is over. So I think that goes without saying. There's a discuss discussion question. There are discussion questions. I'll type those up and put those in the description so that you can sit and journal those if you want or read them and then meditate on them. So I'll leave this stone out so I remember to do that. And the other stone I pulled, oh, I love this stone. I love this one. Oh, this is the weaver, like weaving it all together, that magic. And to me, this feels like the energy of all levels or someone who does the weaving now or whether it is creating a dream catcher, you're like putting in that magic into it. And so perhaps you've already put this magic in and now it's coming, coming full circle for you. The portrait of the weaver crosses many cultural lines. Call her spider woman of the Hopi Indian uh, or, the, or the Greeks. I can't say names sometimes, so I'm skipping over them. I apologize, I'll type them up. <laughs> her task is to weave all creation together. On a more down-to-earth note, she is the seamstress, the builder. She builds one thing after another. Being very detail-oriented, she connects seam to seam or brick to brick, person to person. She builds a network with her web. She recognizes the gift of nature and uses them to further spiritual beauty into the world. She witnesses the preciousness of a bird's nest or of a fallen feather at her feet. The stone's message is craft. How are things manifesting your abilities in the world? How does this creation connect to others? Being in the mother suit, the weaver celebrates living. She advocates quality of life. She advocates quality of life. Spider Woman was the only one who could bring the sun goddess back from the underworld to shine upon all of nature. By tapping your talents, tapping your talents, you shine your your light into the world. Discussion question. 
What talent do you possess to shine your divinity into the world? Mm, there's only one for this one. And I feel like you know what that is. <laughs> You'll be like hiding it aside. And that could feel uncomfortable to put that out, especially if you're being called to put something out into the world that wasn't there before. Um, but perhaps it's needed. And how amazing that you have something within you uh, that wants to be birthed. And you might feel that coming and be open to those connections in the dream world, the synchronicities in the daytime, um, the loving, supportive connections that are around and within you. And how can you see from a bigger picture that it is all coming together for you to shine, to be felt and heard, um, perhaps understood in a new way. And that, that really comes from within. I kind of feel like you have to be so strong within yourself that when a naysayer comes your way, uh, you recognize it as their fear and insecurity. Um, or when someone gives you constructive criticism or food for thought that really requires some time to sit with, that you have that, that open quality to receive it. <sighs> Beautiful, the chariot card, look at that movement. Like it's happening, full steam ahead. I want to be like, good girl. <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Three of chalices, so much to celebrate. Heaven on earth and keep feeling. This card just asks for vulnerability. It's come up recently in another gentle reading. Uh, and look at who's here to support you. Your angels. <laughs> No need to mask who you are is what I'm getting. Hi, Priestess. What is the wisdom within you that wants to come out? The written words, the, the, the knowing that's already in there. And it's just a matter of taking that next step. But really, it's already happening. It's like the ball's already rolling. Kind of like that tumbleweed. But I usually use the tumbleweed example when you let your negative mindset go. It just keeps collecting more dust. Um, but I feel like this is more like that wheel, that energy has already got it going. Just like when you yeah, have that, that truck, it takes a lot. They're pulling a lot. They got a lot of momentum. It takes a lot to stop them. Especially if it's coming through with pure heart. Engine power. And the word sovereignty came up today and I kind of just, because it was like, came in as I was kind of setting up, I, I didn't really write it down, but the fact that she's got her uh, red gown on just kind of reiterates that to me, sovereignty. What do you want? Not what you think someone wants from you. Um, you know, what, what contract do you have from above? That's a different, um, order of operations than people pleasing on this planet. And I like too how she show they show the the artist shows the feet here in this picture so grounded grounded as well as receiving. And I feel like putting out and with the blue cloak, perhaps there's this balance of fire and water, fire and ice. Um, the Jack of Diamonds, so a slow, slow and steady is still movement. And perhaps so slow and steady and the material are now taking on new form. New form, like it's really rolling. Bottom deck energy, yes. Six of clubs, victory. Like, it's happy dance time. <laughs> I'm not gonna dance for you. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> being silly enough. <sighs> what else wants to come through? We'll finish out with the angel card. I only pulled out three decks today. 
is really standing out again. Uh, so I feel like I need to pull that up. Um, there's something different between being malicious and sinister. I put that in like the uh, narcissistic category, although I, I um, you know, I'm not qualified to give any diagnosis or um, so take that lightly. Whereas I would put magical and disagreeable um, on the other side as someone who is like, um, like a red pill or someone who paves the way paves the way, like creates a new way of being, put something new out into the world. Um, and someone might see that, oh, as malicious, but the intent, like you're stirring up something because you're weaving something new together, but that's not with malicious intent, it's not an intent to do harm, you know? And sometimes those who don't want to break that mold Aren't you happy with the change? Look it over. Miracles, miracles, imagine. Again, I'm bring up Yogi Bhajan. He used to say he lived by miracles. He didn't believe in them, he lived by them. And what if you could just have this all in wonder? The the mantra Wahe Guru comes to mind. Wahe Guru is like just like this bow to the infant, this all in wonder to what's here. It's just kind of like this wow, maybe. And I don't know. Um, my grandpa used to say "haba." When he gave me a Tagalog dictionary, I looked it up. I was like, "Oh, that's a real word." I mean, it, I, we just didn't really speak um, Tagalog in the house. Um, he he would only throw out a word or a phrase once in a while uh, until he got ill. He spoke Tagalog a lot, and "haba" was kind of like this. Seemed to be this like uh, kind of wonder, but it can also be like what. <laughs> It's, it can have multiple meanings, but maybe your experience can have multiple meanings and it's how you define it and how you choose to look at life. Um, was that change a gift? Yeah, probably so. Did it feel like it at a time? Probably not. All right, music. Um, I take this as in frequency. You can take it as mantra. You can take this as you know, different beats. Um, you know, more like happy music. Somebody used to make fun of me and be like, you only listen to sad girl music. Uh, I didn't think so <laughs> at the time. I did listen to a lot of Annie DeFranco. I put that the old school Annie DeFranco is more of the anger girl, not sad girl. Um, but choosing your frequency is how I'm going to take this. Is that each word, each phrase, uh, each thought. Um, and just thinking about the vibrations that are in and around you and you. Let's turn up the volume um, to celebrate. Turn up the volume to celebrate um, what's unique and wonderfully you. Like, go ahead and do that victory dance. <laughs> There's not gonna be a referee because I'm seeing that, that in the field, the football field. Man, the Eagles did, the, they did one that was really funny, but like nobody's gonna card you for doing your victory dance. Go for it. And that's not in vain. It's more of like your own pat in the back and gratitude to spirit. New love, what's coming in for you? What opportunities are coming in? And when you wash away the blame, the doubt, the guilt, and you start to recognize in the material realm with new lens, you could be more open to trust your intuitive guidance to allow spirit helpers to start plant, start working their magic above and you work with it to weave it in to possibility today. The truth of who you are, I can't, while I'm talking, I'm feeling a lot in my neck. So it's really just like the truth of who you are is how I'm taking it. And perhaps spirit is ready to reward you for what you've overcome, what you've done. And it's, again, it's not in vain. It's more like you learned your lesson. Now, now here's, here's a new game board. We're putting that, we're packing up Monopoly or we're pulling out something else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Um, underneath this card, kind of side of it is the world, which seemed, I, I was looking at it, it's so beautiful. And I use this uh, versions of uh, 
this in my um, playing card deck, the divination deck. So three versions of this, of how we choose to kind of grow and who we are and that takes, that takes time. And I feel like there's something new on the board for you. Mmm, it's coming in. Like, it's coming in. Let me see, anything else? Happiness is your birthright. And that's what Yogi Bhajan used to say. He'd say, happiness is your birthright. Not that I met him. I just, it's repeated. I hear quotes. I read books. Um, and I, I piece what I, I appreciate about the practice together. Um, and what means a lot to me from that quote is like, you don't have to remain in codependent patterns. You don't have to remain in codependent patterns and codependency could be more than a drink. It could be the hat that you wear, the, the dance that you're in in a relationship, a feeling that you allow for yourself. And will you hold yourself to new standards to rebirth who you are? And it's almost like that, that death card, like putting an end to either the negative self-talk tape or I used to say there was like welcome on my forehead and, and grass stains, like like putting an end to that cycle, whatever that is for you. And it and the Jack of Diamonds reminds us that sometimes these these things take time. They take time. And then the end that you will see, and it might not be comfortable to, to me. Three of, of cups is in this deck, I consider a vulnerability card um, and that being worth celebrating. And I, I don't read that that way in other three of cups um, cards, but the, just the way this speaks and how you're being guided to be exactly who you are, to embrace your own song and dance guided from your intuitive insights. So for now, be open to what's coming through be open to what's coming through and it might look different and the you know originally when when I was kind of opening up to give a general reading I thought we would speak more of opening to opportunity and how sometimes if you have tunnel vision if you manifest and you're like I want x y and z now it's such a beautiful to be clear on what you want but it's like kind of putting out that request or like when you, you have a recipe and yes, these are the rules or these are the steps and these are the ingredients, but maybe you don't have all those ingredients. You trade some things out um, or perhaps it just doesn't mix the same way or you add something new. It's like just being open to co-create and open to what doors are coming in, what's coming in for you from above. Well, I do hope this served well. Um, I feel like there's lots of love and light around you and how beautiful that is. So now.